As President Biden and administration officials push for a ceasefire deal between Israel and Hamas, the families of the hostages remain focused on their missing loved ones. Earlier this week, National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan met with some of the families of Americans being held by Hamas. Our next two guests participated in that discussion. Rachel Goldberg Poland and John Poland joining us now. Their Israeli American son Hirsch was abducted by Hamas while attending the Supernova Music Festival. He had celebrated his 23rd birthday just days before that concert. Good morning to you both. Um, it's always nice to have you with us. Rachel, I'll start with you and that meeting with Jake Sullivan, the National Security Advisor. I know you all participated over Zoom. Did you hear anything in that meeting that encouraged you? Did you hear anything that made you think that the effort to bring your son and the rest of the hostages home is making progress? Well, we definitely felt hope and optimism because that was what uh, Jake Sullivan was relaying to us. And there was the feeling that there is this full court press of enough is enough. We want to get these people home, all 124. And of course, the American eight is something that that hangs on everyone in the administration and the entire American government. And he felt confident that the right people were going back to the region. We know that Brett McGurk and uh, Director uh, Bill Burns were shortly after after the conversation were already on their way back to the region, which was hopeful for all of us. At the end of the day, though, we know that whether you have these extremely seasoned negotiators, diplomats, experts, aides doing all that they're doing, the final outcome is going to come from two men only deciding. And that, I think, is what is so painfully torturous about this. John, today marks eight months, as you know, since October 7th, since Hirsch was abducted. Um, when you sit in that meeting with Jake Sullivan, when you speak, as you all have been for eight months now, to officials inside the U.S. government, what do they say today about the best hope to get the hostages? Is it a deal? Is it a rescue mission? What's, what sounds most promising to you and to the people trying to pull this off? Yeah, the good news is the focus, and that is everybody believes the best possible way to do this is through a deal. The bad news is we've been hearing that for most of the last eight months, and as you know, we're not there yet. I think what President Biden did last Friday night was brave and courageous, and we applaud him. He took a negotiation that was kind of stuck in neutral, maybe even, even sometimes in reverse, and in one fell swoop, it's like he pushed it into third gear. Now we need to keep the momentum going. And uh, as Rachel said, there are all the right people in the region. We need to push on um, the leaders of Israel, the leaders of Hamas, and have them buy into what all of the mediators are pushing. It's a deal that has to get done because the Israeli people are suffering, our hostages are suffering, innocent Gazan civilians are suffering, and eight months is eight months too many. Rachel, you've been through many of these meetings now uh, with American officials, and you've been through a lot of ups and downs. H how are you and John managing to kind of temper your own emotions and exhaustion, your sleep, your food, uh, when you're faced now with another prospect that maybe there is reason to be a little bit more optimistic given this latest push? Well, every morning we get up and we look at each other and say, hope is mandatory. And we try our very best to struggle through another day of elegant, intense torment. And it is absolutely not easy. We are broken and suffering, and yet we have no choice. There is no choice but to keep running. And we're not just running, we're sprinting. This is what all of the hostage families are doing. We just have no choice but to keep full speed ahead, trying every single thing we possibly can do. And we are praying that the leaders of both sides, for their own personal interests, they're not, they're not 
going to come together because they both suddenly have an epiphany aha moment and feel that they should be on the same page. But that's part of compromise is that you give up something that you hold dear for something you hold more dear. So whatever interests are on the Israeli side or the Hamas side need to just lean forward and with the help of these expert negotiators and seasoned diplomats who are in there trying to grease the wheels, we are praying that we get a result. Everyone in this region, I can't even call it suffering. It's it's the next step above suffering. And we need for the leaders to put an end to it. So, John, one of those leaders, Prime Minister Netanyahu, it has now been finalized. He's going to be coming to Washington, addressing Congress on July 24th. What do you make of that invitation and what do you hope to hear from him that day? Well, July 24th to us feels like an eternity away. We are obviously hoping that by July 24th, all of the hostages, hostages are back home. The region is on a path forward. And I would be thrilled if Prime Minister Netanyahu can show up and give a variation of a victory speech. I want nothing more than that. And by the way, I'm also okay with Yafya Sinwar on the other side giving his people a victory speech. If that's what it takes to get this done, let's get it done. Um, a lot can happen between now and July 24th, and uh, we're hopeful. We all hope to. Eight months, as you said, is far too long. Hirsch is 23 years old. We all saw him in that video back in April. We cannot wait him to see him back home with you. Rachel Goldberg, Poland, John Poland, thank you as always for using your voices and being here with us today. We really appreciate it. Thank, thank you, you for, for having us. Your voice.